Jam. Tap Jam of Ciudad de la Park, Barcelona, 2012. We've been doing this Tap Jam for about, mm, let's say, <laughs> six years. I started out the whole thing by myself, but it never came to a real event until my friend Ivan take the compromise to come every Sunday for the past six years to the park and jam. Since then, we've had a whole bunch of stories, a whole bunch of dancers, tap dancers, hip hop dancers, contemporary dancers, musicians, um, lindy hop dancers. There's a huge culture over here and we're gonna take you to this one place where you can express everything you want with your feet or with anything you wanna share with us. Because this is the Ciudadela Tap Jam Park. Porque hace 10 años empecé, hice una formación para ser bailarín de comedia musical y una de las asignaturas era tap dance. Ese fue el primer contacto. Well, I took up tap because um, I've been dancing since I'm 10 years old. And, um, and when I was 17, I was in Madrid and I was taking a jazz class. And I was coming out of the dressing room and I saw the tap teacher in the room doing some maxi fours. And it was really cool. And in my, in my childhood, I always remember of always wanting to dance, but also always hitting the table and doing rhythms and stuff like that. So as soon as I found tap, I just realized that that was the perfect dance for me. Eh, sacrificar, en realidad, bueno, algunas cosas, básicamente conseguir dinero para poder tomar clases, para tener sitios donde entrenar. Muchas veces he tenido que entrenar en sitios públicos como este, sitio maravilloso, las noches, porque no tenía sala para entrenar. Eh, estar lejos de mi familia también es, es importante. Eh, hace 10 años que vivo en Barcelona, yo soy de la Ciudad de México y no voy muy seguido, entonces... Ese podría ser un sacrificio muy grande porque ellos nunca me han visto en realidad como he ido evolucionando en el TAP. No lo he podido compartir al 100% con ellos. Eh, eso sí es un sacrificio. Entonces, siempre que baile intento pensar en mejorar y hacerlo mejor cada día para ver que vale la pena haber estado tan lejos de seres tan queridos. Sacrificios. Well... I wasn't really aware of the sacrifices I was doing because like my other friend said, Ivan, it's just a huge passion. So it took all my time. It took all of, um, it took over everything in life. I mean, my friendships were always based in, in, in tap dance and with tap dancers and people that would see me tap. Um, you know, I guess I realized that I wasn't really, and I've never been kind of a normal guy. Um, I didn't like to go out at night. Um, I just rather, you know, wake up and go straight to get on my shoes on and get into a place to dance. So basically, there wasn't any real sacrifice. I mean, I still had friends, although they all thought I was a bit crazy because I occupied most of my time in, in tap dance. Um, so there isn't a sacrifice when you're such an in love with, with such of a beautiful art form like tap dance. Bueno, he tenido muchas influencias, empezando por mi padre, mi padre me ha influenciado mucho. Eh, en México hay un cantante que se llama Saúl Hernández, que me acompañó durante toda mi adolescencia y aprendí mucho de él porque tiene una poesía muy grande cuando, cuando escribe. Y bailarines de todo tipo, bailarines de jazz, de jazz y de, de, de claque, pues el, la, el que más me ha inspirado es Jason Summers. ¿no? Well, the person I most admire was Gregory Hines. I still remember I one of my first professional tap shoes, <clears throat> sorry, was from Gregory Hines shoes, the Gregory Hines shoes. And um, when I saw him talk in the documentary All About Tap, I felt very identified with everything he said and it made the whole tap dance world have a great new meaning in the way of being being able to express yourself and I've tried to live up to that uh, statement of his in all the career I've been going through in my
my career. Lo que más me ha ayudado es las ganas y la pasión que tengo por el baile, que me, que me encanta. Y un mejor amigo, lo doy con Marbella, es muy responsable de que, de que de haberme descubierto el, el mundo verdadero del tap, porque yo tenía una, una idea más, más superficial, más de musical, y cuando lo conocí a él, pues me enseñó otro tipo de cosas. Me habló de los hoofers, me enseñó videos, eh, interactuamos de una manera diferente, entonces a partir de ahí todo cambió, todas las reglas cambiaron, o sea que él ha sido una parte muy importante para, para eso. Well, I didn't have a lot of help from, from a lot of people. So I guess it was myself, it was just that I had work, I could work on the weekends, and I could train for five days a week, for four hours, for free. So if somebody helped me in this way, it was my second teacher in, um, in Madrid when I started studying. And I mean, I just kept going and going and going and doing it and, and you know, practicing and I felt good. It was all by myself. I didn't, I didn't have a lot of people to work with or to dance with, so you know, it was, it was basically just me and myself. Obstáculos. El primero, tener dinero para poder tomar clases, que es que hay que hacer una inversión importante. Entonces hay que trabajar para poder tomar las mejores clases que tienes. Y dos, que sobrevivir a todo, a las envidias, a los malos rollos, que a veces no existen tanto entre los bailarines, entonces tienes que poner la pasión y el deseo de hacerlo por encima de todo eso, y si tienes ganas de hacerlo, pues lo conseguirás. Well, when I was 19 turning 20, and I started tap dancing when I was 17, I had a, I had a Hodgkin disease, I had to get chemotherapy and radiotherapy. And I couldn't practically dance for about a whole year. So what happened is um, I would dance in my head. I would just, you know, dream and, and go to sleep and daydream about steps and choreographies. And I would just dance in my head. And it was really funny because after that whole year went by and I recovered physically and I could dance, I figured out that I didn't have the physical strength to do it. But my technique was not bad. It was still, it was still pretty good. So that was, I guess, the biggest obstacle because to not be able to dance when I just, I mean, had that passion and it just was introduced to me. It was pretty tough to just, you know, have to lie in bed and, and not have the strength to do anything else but grow up. Al principio no, como todas las familias supongo, eh, al menos en México, primero son muy incrédulos con respecto a que quieras dedicar a algo artístico. Pero bueno, en mi caso, cuando mis padres vieron que realmente me gustaba bailar, a partir de ahí eh, me apoyaron al 100%. De hecho, mi padre fue el primero que me compró mi, mis zapatos de, de baile. Fue muy gracioso, me compró la ropa y me dice, ¿qué quieres? Vamos a una tienda de danza y me compró todo. Sí, yeah, puedes decir que mi familia fue supportiva. I mean, my mother was kind of a singer and a dancer. My dad has done photography, he's been a cook, he's a uh, breed dogs. So they were like kind of really free and they really wanted to be, for me to be happy. So there wasn't a lot of pressure of having to do something in particular. So I took up tap and acting really seriously. And um, I didn't have any complaints for them. No era joven, mis amigos pensaban que estaba loco, pero no lo sabían describir porque a mí me salían cosas muy espontáneas, pero no bailaba. Empecé a bailar a los 19 años, danza, empecé a bailar jazz y mi primer contacto con el claque fue a los 23 años. Entonces, eh, ahora que hablo con ellos, después de muchos años, pues es como que eh, atamos hilos de, claro, ya lo traías desde antes, pero lo descubriste un poco, un poco tarde. Well, you know, most of my peers were, were tap dancers as well, or were in the acting world. So anything that I did artistic was never judged by anybody. And um, it was very supportive and encouraging. Un porcentaje alto, pero más que nada en inspiración, en ideas, en mirar lo que hace otra gente, 
sin tener que viajar a otros países, ver lo que está pasando en todo el mundo, eh, lo que no se le ocurre a uno se le ocurre a otro, o simplemente inspirarte, ¿no? Ver otras épocas, sobre todo a los Hoofers, que no viven ahora mucho, no tengo la suerte de estar en su época, pues mediante el YouTube he podido remontarme a oír y ver cómo bailaban, la música que había, cómo vestían, cómo pensaban. Well, learning from YouTube, I mean, I haven't really learned from YouTube. It's just like seven years ago, yeah, seven years ago, I bought my first like real computer and YouTube had just came out. So it wasn't about learning, it was about, well, it was about learning who were the hoofers and what lifestyle they have and what history was in tap related to the jazz music world. So, um, you know, hearing Jimmy Slag talk or hearing Bunny Briggs or hearing Chuck Green or seeing John Bubbles or Honey Coles and Atkins and all these wonderful dancers with so many different styles, it just made me realize once again how tap is such of a free art of expression of everybody, I mean of your own person. I figured out that everybody that dances, dances very close to who they are. And you can see that after many years, you can see that the people that dance and that improvise, what they're telling you is they're telling you something about themselves. Creo que... Que es importante que el tap se adapte siempre a la época en la que está, en la que está viviendo, en la que está pasando. Lo ha sabido hacer porque por eso lleva tantos años existiendo, seguirá existiendo porque es una tradición muy bonita, además es una tradición que pasa de generación a generación, de persona a persona, pero es importante que se adapte a, a, la, a, la, a la época en la que está. The future of tap is saved. I mean, for the past 20 years, I've been seeing, well, not, I haven't been dancing for 20 years, but I know that the kids that are now 23, 24, 25 are amazing dancers, and they're perfectly comparable to any of the old hoofers in their good days. So pretty much uh, hearing like uh, people like Joseph Wigan in the Cirque du Soleil, or, or the Signal Paid Ladies in the Rihanna video clip, or, uh, all these amazing tap dancers all over. Jason Samuels was dancing with this Indian crazy percussionist guy from the Katak. And um, so it's saved and, and it's beautiful to see that there's a bunch of tap dancers, you know, really expressing tap through their roots or through the stuff they are inspired by. For example, Max Pollack is a great example of how his passion of Latin music has taken over his way of expressing tap. So, you know, Basically, there's tap for everybody. Tap is out. It's it's starting to be a headliner, and um, I think for the next 20 years we're going to be seeing some really crazy stuff, some really stylish and high quality tap dance. So I think it's saved. El tap, wow, es porque ninguna danza me había dado la libertad como persona, como bailarín, de poder expresarme de esa manera, de poder viajar con esa libertad, de poder conocer a tanta gente, tantos sitios, con la única consigna de solo tener mis zapatos en, el, en, la, en la mochila y cada vez que me surge bailar, pues poderlo hacer, solo poniéndome los zapatos, que no me lo había podido dar ni el jazz, ni el ballet, ni el hip hop, ni el etc. Entonces, a raíz de ahí han salido muchas historias que cada vez han hecho que lo respete más, que lo ame más, que le tenga más cariño y que lo poco que sé, pues compartirlo a la gente que tengo, que tengo al lado también. Ok, love tap. What isn't there to love about tap? I mean, it's a great art form. You exercise, you learn about music. Um, it's an amazing vehicle to be able to express all the emotions you can feel. Um, the impact it has on public and on people that see tap is, is, is just great. I mean, you can be very happy as a tap dancer, even if you're not the most successful one, because just the fact of getting your shoes on and laying down some steps on some wood always 
always makes you feel good. So, you know, I love tap and I love the people that do it and I love the people that did it. And I love the people that, that see tap through, through me and they get hooked up on it, like Ivan or like the people that come to this tap jam. Um, it's just a great feeling. And I always say, every time I put my tap shoes on, I feel like I'm a very, very lucky person.